want to know how long you can play PC VR games on your Quest 2 headset using a USB cable before it runs out of power? Want to know whether there's a difference between using a USB-A cable or a USB-C cable? And what's the mystery cable that I've got under here? Welcome to my tech gear, let's find out. So I've reviewed a number of USB cables for the Quest 2 before, and there's plenty of comments on those videos about power. Some say that a USB-A cable isn't worth it and it isn't going to keep your headset charged, so don't bother. Others say that a USB-C cable will keep your headset charged forever. So I thought that making a video that tested both of these sounded like a good idea. Now this one here is the Kiwi Design one. This is the USB-A cable here. It is a 16 foot cable. The cable itself is 181 grams, which is pretty light. It's also pretty flexible for a USB-A cable. And this cable here is the USB-C cable. It is a fiber optic cable from a company called Fiber. It has the same spec as the official Meta Link cable, but it only costs $50 instead of costing $80. Now it is easily the most flexible of the two cables here, and this is because it's fiber optic. This cable weighs 211 grams, so it's about 30 grams heavier than the Kiwi Design one. I didn't generally feel it though when I was playing, so it wasn't pulling on my headset any more than this one was, and it was nice and easy to play with. And that mystery cable that I was talking about? Well, this is the JSOTS Quest 2 Link cable. This is a 15 foot cable that has both USB-A and USB-C plugs. So it connects to your PC using the USB-A plug, and then it uses the USB-C plug to plug into the mains charger for power, all down the same cable to your headset. JSOX advertised this as an all-day cable. That's potentially great news if you've only got a USB-A port on your PC. The cable itself has a nice long USB-C power cable, so it's easy to plug into a power source without it having to be super close to where your PC is. The cable itself is braided, which is really nice, but it is quite thick which actually makes the cable quite stiff. So that and the cable splitter that's here and the extra power cable make this the heaviest cable here. It weighs 239 grams. So I want to keep the test as even as I possibly can. So before testing each cable, I am gonna charge the headset up to 100%. I'm going to be using the same PC. I'm going to be testing the, with the same game using Half-Life Alex and playing for two hours when I test each cable. I'm actually going to be using the same spec USB port on the PC as well. So both the USB-A and the USB-C port on my PC support USB 3.1 Gen 2. And for testing the JSOX cable for that USB power I was talking about, I'm gonna go and just use the bog standard charger that comes with the Quest 2 out of the box, so nothing special there. So with that all said and done, I need to go do some gaming. So I'll see you in a bit. Here's a handy hint to help protect the cable and the headset. When you're attaching it, use a Velcro strap or something to attach it to the side of the head strap. That's gonna help stop it pulling on your headset, so it's gonna help protect the cable, and it's also gonna help protect the socket on the Quest 2 headset as well. So that's the testing all done, and you might actually be surprised by the results. So the first cable I tested was the Kiwi Design one here. This is the cheapest cable, it's about $20. I've seen it down to around 17. Well, after two hours of gaming, the power on the headset dropped to 65%. So it lost 35% power in two hours of play. The fiber optic cable from fiber here, after two hours, that dropped down to 85%. So that dropped 15% over two hours. The JSOX cable here, it's a USB-A cable, but with that dedicated power, it dropped 5% in two hours of gaming. So it kept the headset charged at 95%. So what does that mean in real terms? Well, based on the power drain over the two hours with these cables, and assuming a linear decline in battery power, your headset would eventually run out of power using each cable as follows. The Kiwi Design cable, as it dropped 35% in two hours, would run out of power in five hours and 43 minutes. The fiber, fiber optic cable, that dropped 15% in two hours. That would therefore allow you to run for 13 hours and 20 minutes before your headset ran out of power with that cable. So you're getting over double what the USB-A cable provided here. The JSOX cable though was the big surprise. Only dropped 5% in two hours. That means in theory, it would run for 52 hours before your headset ran out of power. 
and that's mental. Now that was a real surprise, because I was expecting the USB-A cable to be the weakest to be honest, but I didn't think the JSOX one would keep your headset as charged as it did. And the fiber optic cable is a solid cable, nice, light, no external power needed. You get over 13 hours of gaming, it's definitely a solid investment. So all the cables here are charging your headset to some degree. And whilst the tests were created as equal as they could be to get a fair result, there are a couple of things that you should watch out for that can have a significant impact on the battery time for you. First up, the USB port. So the USB port that you use on your PC is vitally important. USB-A ports on a PC typically provide about two and a half or four and a half watts of power, depending upon whether it's a USB 2 or USB 3 port. So if you don't use a USB 3 port on your PC, then you are going to significantly reduce the amount of power that can be delivered to the headset. And so you'll get less playing time. USB-C ports, on the other hand, can provide up to 15 watts of power. So these provide typically three and a half times more power than the best USB-A port. Second, refresh rates. Now refresh rates matter. So these tests were conducted using the default refresh rates that Meta recommends for PC VR gaming, which is 72 hertz or 72 frames per second. Now you can ramp that all the way up to 120 frames per second for smoother gameplay, but if you do that, then your headset is now displaying over 50% more frames per second than it was by default. So that will impact battery life. So both those things are definitely gonna have a significant impact on how long you'll be able to play PC VR games on your Quest 2 headset. With all that said and done, which should you buy? Well, it depends. The great result out of all of this testing is that no matter which cable you buy, you will get at least five hours of gameplay. So from as little as $17, you can get the Kiwi Design cable that should do you well if you only want to play for a few hours at a time. For those more hardcore gamers that want to max it out to 120 frames per second and play for most of the day on a single charge, I could never justify the $80 that Meta charged for their fiber optic cable, but at $50, the Fiber C5 cable is a good buy and I think worth the upgrade over the cheaper cables if you have the extra budget. And finally, for those of you that basically want to live in your VR headset or more realistically, want to have the most playtime that you can get but don't have a USB-C port on your PC, then the JSOX is a good option if you don't mind the weight and stiffness of that cable. I hope that has helped you decide if any of these cables are the right one for you. Do let me know in the comments down below which one you got and why. Or if you've already got one of these, let me know what you think of it. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, then please consider hitting that button down below and hitting that notification bell so you're notified about new videos as and when I release them. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.